You're listening to the New Youth Radio, a show about global culture and local youth. Hi, my name is Toby. Each week, we'll interview a local band or musician, ask them about their global connection, and play some of their music. Today, we have Toby Adanza and Coco Wang in the studio, two youth who are actively involved in Immigrant Services Youth Program, Utopia. Let's start with Toby doing an in-studio acoustic cover of Filipina singer Yang Constantine's song Hawa Kame, or Hand in Hand in English. Toby. And can you guys tell me a little bit about uh, what school you go to and uh, where you're from and how long you've been in Canada for? Okay, so it's Coco here, and I go to John F. Ross. I've been here for about four years, roughly, and I'm from Taiwan. And whereabouts in Taiwan were you from? It's uh, Taichung, which is the central part of the country. And is it quite a large city? Mm, I think it's the third large city. And so when you first came to Guelph, what were your feelings about uh, the, the, the city? Well, like, the first impression was like, oh, this is a really, like, countryside-like city. So. And Toby, where are you from and how long have you been in Canada for and Guelph? I came to Canada two years ago, oh, two and a half years ago. I came from the Philippines. And then when I got here, I went straight to Bishop McDonnell Catholic High School. So I started there, grade 10. And whereabouts uh, are you from in the Philippines? Near the capital city, Manila. And um, what were your thoughts when you first saw Guelph? Well, we had lots of relatives here. So even when I was still in the Philippines, they've been talking about like, Guelph is so quiet, peaceful, like unlike where I grew up, so loud and lots of people. But here, like... Sometimes you cannot even see people walking around with you. And like when I'm driving, like sometimes I don't see any cars, just me. <laughs> and then the two of you also did Rise Up, which was um, another program that happened through um, Ethiopia and Immigrant Services. Yeah. Can you describe a little bit of the process? Okay, so like pretty much like it's about the immigrants, right? 
like it's pretty much like describing how it feels to be like moving in a new country kind of thing like how you develop yourself too and it helps us like it help a lot like for us to develop ourselves like dur like during those times that we were doing it like we're not just acting like that's us like we are the actors but like we are the actors just like acting our like true lives do you remember some of your lines from the show do you coco do you want to try your lines and then we can talk my about monologue? that yeah my monologue was about how people see you and like how people like look you in a weird way when you're different from them so how i think some of the lines was like wait i can't remember oh it's like we're all born from our mother and we rot when we die so like how are how are we different and then there was like Oh, and there's like people have, uh, there ha they have eyes that stare at you like you don't belong here, and then they pick out your accent, and to make fun of, and then they exchange their comments, comments so they can make fun of us, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean when I heard that, I I was uh, I was quite sort of moved by that um and was like was that how you felt and is that still how you feel or is it something that was just sort of a raw moment at the beginning of your experience um i think no like it's always there but like but now now it's okay like i don't really care but like like when you first come to canada like when you don't speak any english like people will be like people actually like put like an equal sign on can't speak English to like stupid like some not all but like some people they do and is is that how you felt as well Toby or oh for my monologue no 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 oh. just like what's what Coco's saying about yeah it's the same thing like really like it's pretty much like the same as my monologue it's just like di different concept yeah I remember I remember my monologue now <laughs> it's like about me like I remember my first time it's like well Look at that, like, I'm here again sitting alone. Like, I was actually talking while I was in the washroom. Because, like, when I first came here, like, I didn't really want to go to the cafe. Because, like, lots of people will stare at you and then walking in the hallways. They're so fast. When you're walking with them, you're like, whoa, what's happening? <laughs> and then, yeah, I used to, like, sit, uh, like, eat my lunch by myself and... It happened that I had to go to the washroom just to eat it because like, I was starving. <laughs> like I couldn't help it anymore, and then I had to eat, but I I don't I didn't know where to go, so I went to the washroom. And then for that monologue, that's the like the theme. Like I was in the washroom talking to myself, how I changed. Like I I used to be so happy and like friendly back in the Philippines, but when I when I came here to Canada, it seems I don't like I can't even recognize myself. And then. At the end of the monologue, after talking about all like the b bad times at school, like at the end, I, w I said that like I want to change, like I want to get out of my shell and be who I am. That's exactly what I felt like when I first came here. Like when people asked me how was it starting, so I was like, like I see, I say th like the same things over and over. Yeah, but that's how you learn, right? And now, Toby, you're um you're graduating this year. Yeah, and on Thursday, uh. To the twenty eighth, I think June twenty eighth. Excited. <laughs> and uh, what are your plans after graduation? Well, for the summer, I want to get more hours at my workplace, and then uh, hang out with friends and visit some places in Canada because I don't have money for out of the country yet. <laughs> and but, where uh, where are you wanting to visit in Canada? Uh, me and family were planning to go to. Quebec and Ottawa for like a week with some family friends so that would be so exciting because I haven't been there. And is that something your family likes to do? Yeah like we want to go out like every like at least once a month. That's how we bond. So much fun. And now Coco, um, you're also off on an adventure. Yes, I'm actually going back to Taiwan. And have you been back since you came? 
Mm, yeah, once. Uh, that time, I think it was 2010. I went back for two months. Every time you go back now, I mean, obviously your English is improving every time you go back. How, where is your Chinese at? Like, do you find it strange when you have to speak Chinese all the time? Well, what is that like, living in t- with two languages? Well, like, I don't know if it's just me, but, like, every time I talk to a different person, say, like, my mom, I feel, like, awkward speaking English. And when I talk to my friend in Canada, it's, I like, even though it's, like, a Chinese friend, but, like, I still feel like something's not right if I'm speaking Chinese. But, like, if I'm back in Taiwan, talking to my friends back in Taiwan, like, I just speak, like, really fluently. In in the Philippines, do you speak English and Tagalog yeah. or just Tagalog all the time? Well, it depends because actually English is our, like, second language and you cannot get a good job if you don't know how to speak English. And, like, we learn it at school, like, it's part of our, like, we have to take it for us to be able to graduate. But would you would you say you spoke English casually to people or not really? Here in Canada? No, no, in back at back ho- back in oh, the Philippines. Oh no, we we're just we do it for fun, <laughs> like speaking English. Oh, cause like in the Philippines, when you speak English, like people would think that oh she's or he's rich probably, <laughs> cause we don't really speak English in uh, like normal days. <laughs> and so, how was that transition when you came here, having to speak English for real? Well, I thought it was easy because, like, I speak English, like, I understand and I can speak. But, like, the thing is the accent and how to understand people, like, they talk so fast. And, like, the way they use words is, like, kind of different from us. Like, it's not really different the way they mix words together, like, put it on. Like, what do you mean? (laughs) But, like, you'll get used to it. Like, you'll learn. Like, I've been here for just two years, but, like, it's easy to, like, learn. If you want to learn, you would learn. And Coco, it was easy for you? Or you also learned English? Yeah, we do learn English at school too, but we never get to say it. We just, like, study, like, grammars and stuff. So, like, when I came here, like, same as Toby, like, people just speak, like, really fast. I was like, what? I didn't catch that. And now let's talk a bit about your singing. Um, Because I know both of you really enjoy music. Um, And can you talk a little bit more about the songs that you chose um, and know that you you presented these uh, at um, the Guelph District Multicultural Festival in front of a large opening crowd, which I, I know the two of you were, were a little surprised. Uh, but if you want to talk a little bit about why you chose those songs and what music means to you. Music is everything. It's everything. It's everywhere. And, like, it's passion. Like, you will know the meaning of music by heart, not in dictionary. And, yeah, for the songs, we chose Pengyu. That's, that means friends in English. Well, I actually asked Coco to do it with me. Because, like, back in the Philippines, there's this Filipino-Chinese girl who sang it, and she's quite popular. So I learned the song in Mandarin and in my language. Then I was like, and then I sang it to Coco, and she was like, "Oh, you're terrible." Oh, kind of, not really. <laughs> and then we let you ask us to do a song for multicultural. I was like, "Oh, it will be a great idea to do it with Coco and me to do this song, and then mix up like English, Mandarin, and then Filipino." And then we did it. While singing the song, it's not just like singing the song, like we're actually, like for me, I don't know about Coco, but like for me, like I'm singing the song for her because like she's my best friend and yeah, I quite enjoy it. And Coco, what about your thoughts on music? Um, I think like music is something like you can't explain, but it's there and you can get a lot of things from music. You get to express yourself, you get to learn stuff, you get to hear what other people want to say. Coco, there was one other thing that I wanted to ask you because I know we spoke about it before, and that is reading. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, you were saying that you don't really have a problem with speaking English, but that reading, you you don't enjoy reading English. Well, like, I love reading and, like, when the book is in Mandarin, like, back in Taiwan, I almost read, like, everything. Like, I have two bookshelves full of like novels and stuff I do like to read but like when I'm reading in English 
if I have the same line in English and in Chinese, I can read really fast. The Chinese line I can read like really fast, and I get what it means. But like in English, sometimes if I read it once, like look it over once, I might not get that meaning at one time. Well, it's mostly because like I don't read as much. And that's not my first language, so like I don't get what they're saying right away. So when I'm reading a novel, if I look over a few lines, I was like, okay, so what did they say? And then I so I'll have to go back and look at probably two or three times, and that takes up a lot of time. <laughs> so yeah, I just feel like I don't know when I'm reading English novels, I don't really get the moral of the book. Yeah, like in Chinese, like I can really like put myself into the situation and stuff, and really think about it, like what I'm reading. But in English, it's just like you're reading your textbook. And do you feel like it's improving all the time? Have you found any good books? Can you recommend any good books? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the re- the one that I really read for quite a while is Twilight. When it first like got like really popular and people was, was like like everybody's reading it, I was like okay, so it seems like this is a good book. Oh, like also the difference between like English and like Chinese book is we we talk about different things. Like in like Western books are more like like you know those like science fiction, like you know those their fiction novel is more towards like you know like monster blah blah blah, and then. In Chinese, is like different culture, and then you have different stories, which also makes it like different. But anyways, yeah. So people were talking about Twilight, and I was like, okay, so sounds like a good book. So maybe I should go read it. So yeah, I did bought the whole series, and yeah, I did finish all of them. But like, it took quite a while. Like quite a while, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, but like if it, if it was in like Chinese, I would like probably done in like a week. But like in English, I, it took me like a month or so to like finish all of them. And what about you, Toby? Any recommendations of anything good that you've read? Well, every everybody probably knows Hunger Games. Well, that's a good one. And yeah, I'm still about to read the last two books. And there's this one that I just read from an English class, and it's called Theories of Relativity. I forgot who's the author, but like it's about the homeless kid. Like he he got kicked out of the house, and like he has a pretty terrible family. And I I would say that like cause I made a review for that one. Like it's really a good book. Like it's heartbreaking, but like at the same time you would learn things that like me or like Coco like. Those people who goes to school, like they should know how lucky they are, like for being able to go to school, because there are some people here or like somewhere that we don't know. Like even though they want to go to school, even though it's free, they can't for some reason. It will really develop your mind and everything, like how you see things around you. Well, that's excellent. Thank you for、yeah. your recommendations. <laughs> no, that's really good. Alrighty. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. And hopefully, Toby and Coco will come back、um, and be your hosts in the future to host New Youth Radio or different seg- segments. I've asked、uh, Coco when she goes over to Taiwan to maybe do some recordings of her, some of her、um, thoughts or some. You know, sort of funny or sad moments of experiences that she has while she's there, or just like quirky moments of life, <laughs> you know, life in Taiwan、uh, with her grandma. So、uh, hopefully, we'll get some cool things back、uh, from from that. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The skin I'm in is just a covering. It cannot tell my story. The skin I'm in is just a covering. If you wanna know who I am, you've gotta come inside and open your heart way wide. The skin I'm in looks good to me. It will let you know one small way to trace my identity. But then again, the skin I'm in will always be just a covering. It cannot tell my story. If you wanna know who I am, you've gotta come inside. Be with me inside the me of me, all made of stories, present, past, future, some true to life, and others all fun and fantasy. All the way, I imagine me. You can find all about me, coming close and letting go of who you might think I am before you come inside and let me be real and you become real to me. All real then 
In that place where skin again is one small way to see me, but not real enough to be all the me of me or the you of you. For we are all inside, made up of real history, real dreams, and the stuff of all we hope for when we can be all real together on the inside. Here on the hilltop where we fell in love many moons later, now we're giving up. I start the engine and you start to cry. It's a beautiful memory but a sad goodbye. How many times have you wished in a star wrapped up in a quilt on the hood of my car? You saw the ha Haley's Comet and the lunar, e lunar eclipse? I sure saw heaven when I tasted your lips. So blow out the stars, turn off the moon, fade out the crickets and the nightingale's tune, take down the magnolias that ride soft in the wind, another love story has come to an end. When our love was new at first, evening star, we both said I'll worship you just as you are. Then I try to change you and I don't know why, you try to change me, hey, we might as well try to blow out the stars, turn off the moon, fade out the crickets in the nightingale's tune, take down the magnolias that ride soft no wind, another love story has come to an end. Take down the magnolias that ride soft no wind, another love story has come to an end. I remember, I remember when the sky was always blue, high and bright, bright sun, not caring about the little things not wanting to sleep and fear of missing something neat. Going out with the other kids, manhunt, heelys and kites. Eating non-stop candy, not worrying about the dentist. Feeling safe in a world so dangerous. Believing words more than actions. Trusting the unknown. I remember making Jebena with a true Abyssinia affair. Being family to strangers? Asking, Bunaf Lechalo, no go rabbit. Those lovely coffee ceremonies. <sighs> Memories that last forever and pictures that tell stories. Helping mom the garden, cut cut to yarag and baz no akafa. Miss the days, being two feet away from dad and Bessa. You just listened to some spoken word pieces. The first was Bell Hooks's poem, Skin Again, read by Karen Schwippersad. This was followed by Olivia Kabamba's emotive rendition of Blow Out the Stars, Turn Out the Moon, song lyrics by the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. Marissa Knight and Hewan Waseni closed off with their own spoken word pieces about remembering. Poetry and spoken word are very powerful mediums uh, to express yourself. And it's a great way for youth especially to get your ideas out there uh, and uh, please don't be intimidated by the idea of writing poetry or uh, presenting spoken word pieces. We have a wonderful organization in town called Guelph Spoken Word, and they run a monthly uh, poetry slam for youth at the Guelph Public Library. And this is a wonderful way to get involved, get a sense of what spoken word is all about, and hopefully you'll be inspired to write your own spoken word pieces. And if you do write your own spoken word pieces, We'd be more than happy to have you on our show to present them. Uh, all you need to do is email youth at is-gw.ca. We'll close with Shivangi Bayana Song Chalu. Shivangi was born and raised in Vancouver, and her parents immigrated from India. In the past, she has sung, composed, and written lyrics for many projects, but Chalu is her first single in which she has sung, composed, and written all of the lyrics. Her musical style is all her own and blends her traditional Indian music training with Western pop sounds, making it 100% Canadian. Mm -hmm. 